Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that I'm going to show you is a little known story that's sneaking out of Colorado. Now, the reason that this is so important is they're backing off of sensitive places, but the reason why they're backing off of sensitive places is directly related to you, your activism, your paying attention, and the Supreme Court and the response that we've given to when they infringe. This is going to be one you need to send out because there's a lot of things under the surface here which are massively important and a win, in my opinion. Now, everything will be linked in the description box below. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think in the comments. And of course, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. And this content this week is brought to us by American Heart for Gold. It wouldn't be possible if they didn't sponsor the program to insulate us from the YouTube cancellation machine. So I'm going to say a quick word from them and then we're going to get it. And the content today is brought to you by American Hartford Gold. And brothers and sisters, with everything popping off around the world, war is cracking off. We've got inflation issues. We've got stock market volatility. We have cash concerns. We have oil concerns. It's a good time to take a look and at least know your options with American Hartford Gold. They are dedicated to offering gold, silver, platinum, coins, and bars for your investing needs. Whether you want to do it delivered to your door or you want an IRA, Roth IRA, 401k, TSP, they've got options. This is something you guys should check out. At American Hartford Gold, they aim to educate clients about investments in the precious metal industry, strive to provide unparalleled customer service built on trust, integrity, and absolute transparency, while holding a goal of achieving 100% customer satisfaction. Click the link in the description or call 844-727-3199. That's 844-727-3199 or text Langley to 65532. Again, that's 844-727-3199 or text Langley to 655. All right, beautiful people. We are going to dive into the Mile High State, the uh, Colorado, as they call it. But listen to this article. This is an interesting one. Listen to this title. Facing Skepticism. Democrats eliminate dozens of sensitive spaces from gun control bill. Okay, hold on a second. They have full control in Colorado. Why would they be deleting sensitive place lists in a fully Democratic controlled apparatus when they've told us common sense gun safety is obviously the paramount focus of the Democrat legislator? legislature. Why would they be deleting sensitive places if they've been proven that they work in New York and in California and Illinois? Why? That why is a really important question. Check this out. Let me show you where they started, where they ended up, and then the underlying cause, which is so key and crucial to understand. When state lawmakers first introduced a new gun control measure in February, it included a list of more than two dozen places where guns would be banned. The original version prohibited carrying a firearm, whether openly or concealed, from everywhere from banks to bars, carnivals to churches, dispensaries to hospitals, and arenas to zoos, among many other locations named in the bill. Now, if you're new to this whole fight, which odds are you're not, but if you are, Sensitive places is basically the thumbing your nose at the Supreme Court ruling that these states came out and said, well, we're going to do this to say, ha ha, nanny nanny boo boo, we gave you a carry permit, but you can't carry it anywhere. It's akin to a mother or a father telling the children to share the cereal or the older to give the younger a bowl of cereal. And then the older says, well, I gave him the bowl of cereal, but you didn't say anything about milk. It's kind of like that. To put it in a real world example, it's a really good example of it. But now let's continue. Let me show you where they ended up. And again, the payoff here is the next piece. Now the proposal has been slightly or significantly narrowed after questions from a key Democratic senator. The list of proposed sensitive spaces has been reduced to much of the state capitol building, public and private schools, courthouses, polling places, local government buildings, and unless the, government, uh, the local government chooses to allow firearms. That's pretty much what the laws were before. Why are they passing a bill that, ex that reinforces laws that were already in place when the overarching theme of the sensitive places was to ban guns from everywhere, judging by the list that we had prior? Over two dozen places in one, then a Democratic senator comes up and says, no, 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 let's kill it back down to where they all were before. Why? You have to ask yourself why, because that doesn't make sense. If Again, if you, in Colorado, they've told us gun control is all the rage. That's what the people want. It makes total sense for them to do this because it's what the people demand, and they hate guns, and so therefore, since the spaces, it works in New York and Cal uh, California. Well, this next little piece is kind of the dead giveaway, and it speaks to something a lot more broad than just Colorado. Listen to this. 
The changes were made by the Senate Judiciary Committee. By the way, that is a completely Democratic-controlled committee because the Democrats have trifecta power in Colorado. Largely in response to concerns from Senator Dylan Roberts, a Democrat, he said the new version of the bill would have stronger legal standing even after the U.S. Supreme Court undermined the basis of many gun laws in the Bruin decision. Stronger, stronger legal standing. I have a question for you guys. It might require some critical thinking, so this is right in our alley. If you're telling me in New York and in California and Illinois that sensitive places are perfectly constitutional and they are perfectly legal and everything is fine and there's no infringement upon the rights of the population at all, and you have pending Supreme Court cases around that very thing, well, excuse me, judicial court cases at the circuit level, particularly in New York, around that very thing. And now in Colorado, a place completely controlled by Democrats, which is a little not as far left as New York or California, is saying we'll have a stronger legal standing if we don't do this. Well, that would imply that the legal standing is weaker around all the sensitive places because you're telling people where they can and cannot bear arms. Do you see my point? The entire thing is built around the notion that sensitive places are by far the most common sense gun laws that they can put forward. And New York and California and Illinois have them. But then Colorado says we should probably pair those back because we're not going to have a strong legal footing if we don't. What does that mean if it's extrapolated? So now Colorado is saying, nah, it's not a good vibe. We're going to get in trouble. We're going to get smacked around. Again, the actions you guys have driven through GOA support, NRA support, FPC support, whoever. The court cases are taking effect on the Democrats before they even pass bills. That's the important piece. That's the payoff. The first part of the payoff is, wait a minute, I thought it was constitutional, but now it's not. Maybe it is. Maybe we have a stronger legal standing. That's the first part. The second part is what the impact that you're having. These Democrats in the states that are not far as far left blue, like California and Illinois and New York, they're having a moment of consideration around the legal law, the, the, excuse me, the legal ramifications of the laws they're about to pass, the infringements upon the Second Amendment, which they're about to pass. They're actually taking stock of the lawsuits that have been filed in other states, and you're affecting policy at different states. Understand, that's, I hope I'm landing this plane. The actions that other groups are taking through your direct support and your awareness of what's going on are causing cities and states that are in a little bit less blue to rethink their actions. They're still infringing. Don't get me wrong. But your impact is being felt right here because they're going to have a stronger legal standing if they back off the edge. This is big, people. And I hope I landed that plane. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.